In this video, we will discuss the weighted average cost of capital, or WAC, and corporate tax rates. The weighted average cost of capital is calculated from the fraction of a company financed with debt times the cost of debt times 1 minus the corporate tax rate plus the fraction of the company financed with equity times the cost of equity. If the fraction of the company financed with debt is given, the fraction of the company financed with equity can be found from 1 minus the fraction of the company financed with debt, and the ratio of these two gives the debt to equity ratio, which is necessary to calculate the leverage cost of capital from the Hamada equation. In the Hamada equation, we have the beta leveraged equals the beta unleveraged times 1 plus, again, we have the corporate tax rate, 1 minus the corporate tax rate, times the debt to equity ratio. And that is used to calculate the cost of equity capital from the capital asset pricing model. The required rate of return of a company's stock is the risk-free rate, in this case given as 3%, plus the market risk premium, or the rate of return of the market minus the risk-free rate, in this case 13 minus 3, times the leverage beta. Common proxies for the market rate of return would be the S&P 500 or the Wilshire 5000, and for the risk-free rate would be the U.S. government T-bill. Once we have calculated these numbers, we can now proceed to calculate a series of betas followed by a series of wax. So to get each leverage beta, Again, we start with the unleveraged beta, given as 1, times 1 plus 1 minus the corporate tax rate, which we will vary in this case, times the debt-to-equity ratio, which in this case is given as 1. Once we have calculated each leverage beta, we will then calculate the cost of capital, and again, each time we are varying the corporate tax rate. After we have the cost of capital for each corporate tax rate, we will then calculate WAC. So WAC is going to be the fraction of the company financed with debt, in this case one half, times the cost of debt, which we are keeping in this case at 10%, and keeping that constant, times 1 minus, again, the corporate tax rate, plus the fraction of the company financed with equity, times the cost of equity, which again, varies with the corporate tax rate. Now we have calculated all of our wax as a function of all of our corporate tax rates. Note, interestingly, the cost of capital for a company as corporate tax rates go up goes down. The primary determination of this is the fact that debt is tax deductible by companies. So the higher the corporate tax rate is, the more advantage there is for a company to finance with debt. Therefore, commercial banks are going to tend to favor high corporate tax rates since it will encourage companies to finance with more and more debt. Investment banks might prefer lower corporate tax rates since it would then encourage a company to finance with more equity. Note that while corporate taxes go up, that does not mean our will corporate tax go go up decreases the cost of capital to a company, that does not mean an increase of corporate tax rates will increase the value of a company. It will, of course, do the exact opposite because the value of a company is going to be determined by things like the free cash flow and the growth rate that they are allowed to keep their money and reinvest versus paying out in more taxes. We will discuss that topic in more detail in another video on the Magdaliani and Miller theory and capital structure, um, thank you for watching this video.